right, so I'll start with the, the website. Okay. Um, so we've added a few uh, things to the main page. There's a section that shows all of the resources. We're highlighting still the Parish Encuentro resources, but if we just click on the diocesan resources, Mm -hmm. um, it opens up a, this top section is all the new things that have been uh, created in the last three, three or four weeks uh, to make this go a little bit easier. Um, and so I think you've all seen and maybe been working with the Diocesan Encuentro Planning Guide. Uh, right. This is now updated. So if you had it before, before this week, you should download it again. Um, there have been... A, it's not major changes. Um, let me just highlight a couple of things. Sure. If you open up that document, the, the planning guide, uh, let me see here. So let's go down to uh, page two. Um, near the bottom, there's a bullet uh, that says, it is recommended to send an email to the delegates at least a week before the diocesan encuentro with important details about the logistics of the diocesan encuentro and with the diocesan working document in both languages. Um, for delegates who, delegates who do not have or use email, send them a copy by regular mail or ask their parish coordinator to print and deliver it to them. So that's that's a new step that we added. Um, you know, there's, the, the working document could be anywhere from 10 to 20 pages long. And that if you have a lot of people coming to your diocesan encuentro, that could be a significant expense. Um, by asking them to print it out on their own at home or have the, the parishes, the parish coordinators print and deliver to those who don't have email. Um, it could save a little bit of expense and it also gives the, uh, the participants, the del delegates an opportunity to look over and familiarize themselves with what's, what's there so that when they come, um, they'll be ready to engage in conversation and reflection. Um, so that's that's the main change. I mean, there's a few other small details in the process, but those are, are reflected in the the working document, PowerPoint, and the facilitator's instructions. So we'll we'll get to those in a minute. So um, let me move on. And um, you know, I, I did mention the the email. Um, we put together a, a, a basic template. It's not much different from the, the pastor's letter that, that we put together from, for the parish encuentros. But again, the fi final paragraph we say, mention that the working document is attached in English and Spanish, and ask everyone to print a copy in their preferred language to bring with them to the DAS and encuentro. <clears throat> Probably not everyone will bring their copy, so you'll wanna have a certain number. Uh, it's up to you to figure out how many you, you want to uh, print and have available at your Encuentro event. Um, but what we will need to have on hand for everyone um, during the process is part four of the, um, the, the diocesan working document. Uh, so let me open that one now, uh, the working document, and we'll kind of step through what's there. Um, the first page is just kind of introduction and, and, and basic instructions. <clears throat> Part one, uh, archdiocesan or diocesan information. Um, you know, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. It, it, when this document gets sent in to the regional and, and the national offices, that will help us to know where the information is coming from and a little bit of you know, how the, the diocesan team sees the pastoral reality in that place. Um, so then we go on to part two, the voices of Hispanic and Latino people in the peripheries. Um, this is mostly coming from the parish working documents. I totally leave it up to you. I mean, uh, for dioceses that use the online 
consultation forms. If you want to, you know, you will have received a link uh, to see uh, the data for all the parishes in one in one page, um, or you know, one web page. Um, if you want to refer back to that and and see if there's anything missing, you can. It's not required. We assume that the parish working documents were uh, were done well, um, and we we consolidated this into basically three questions, or actually two questions. Um, the highlights and common themes regarding the obstacles, needs, and situations that require pastoral attention. And then the highlights and common things regarding their most significant hopes and dreams, as well as their gifts and talents. So that was question 7A and 7B in the parish working documents. Um, the idea is bring all that information together, organize it, you know, um, see what are the common ideas that are coming through. You don't want to put more than one page of information to answer each of these two questions. Otherwise, the delegates will just become overwhelmed and you know it becomes impossible to really have a conversation about it in a very limited time um, so that that could be a a time-consuming task for your your team to consolidate that information depending on how many parishes there are uh, but it's important to, to you know condense it as much as possible no more than one page um, part three, the voices from the parish communities and participating organizations. Um, so these are some of the, the successful practices that respond to the challenges, obstacles, and needs that were identified. How are the parishes, how are the organizations affirming the presence and contributions of Latinos in, in the peripheries? Um, how are they responding to family ministries, adolescents and young adults, those who have left the faith or are in at-risk situations? Um, and then successful practices to promote and accompany Hispanic and Latino leaders, especially uh, promoting vocations. And then the fourth one is anything else that maybe doesn't fit into those categories, but that you think it's uh, worth highlighting. You know, what was something that really struck you when you looked at all of the, uh, the parish reports? Maybe there were some standout ideas that you'd want to, to share. Uh, so question eight gives you space to to respond to or, or recognize those. Yes, Ricardo. Okay, so uh, I just started my, my job as director of Hispanic ministry not too long ago, and this process had already been started. Pretty much none of my parishes did, did a working document. So, okay. I mean, I have received the forms, um, and it's very mixed as the thoroughness of the actual information that I'm getting, even in parishes that did it well. Yeah. So what is, would there be a way to modify the planning documents so that I can, so that we can have a working doc, so that we can create the working document from the delegates? What I would suggest is uh, convoke a meeting with all of your parish coordinators and as many of the small group facilitators as you can. Um, and, and, you know, have kind of like an open, open mic opportunity to have somebody taking notes. Uh, I mean, they, they, they went through the five sessions, you know, many of them participated in the, uh, the mission actions, or at least they heard the, the responses of those who did. Um, and so, um, maybe record it. And then afterwards you can take notes, um, organize the ideas and, um, and, and document it. Uh, if you have anything that has been handed in in paper or you know on in a document, certainly right. make use of that. Um, right. But you're not limited to that. You can definitely, if nothing else, and you know if the the diocese is very, uh, you know, a, a very large geographic area, yes, yeah. maybe do a, a a two hour phone call at at some point, um, you know, a conference call. Um, and have an opportunity for, for everyone to, to voice their ideas. Write it down as, you know, as soon as possible after the meeting, send it out and ask them for, for feedback and to add anyth anything that they feel is missing. Sure. You know, and that way um, you, you're still benefiting from all of the conversations that have happened, all of the, uh, the mission act actions that have taken place uh, it, it might not be as systematically recorded, uh, but it's, it's the living uh, memory 
of, of the, the people that participated and you can record all of that. Okay, okay, sounds good. Okay, so and that way I can just follow the template for the diocesan one. Right. Okay, gotcha, thank you. Now, part four, this is actually coming from the, um, the, dia or the, the parish Encuentro days, um, the, the Encuentro event, not the five sessions, uh, there's Excuse a part. Me, Ken, what number, sorry, what, what number are you on, Ken, or what page okay. are you on? This is part four of the working document. We're still in the working document, starting on page eight. Oh, you're on page eight. Yes, we're okay. on page eight now. Uh, and uh, the, okay, I, all right. Got every it. time you see a box there that has uh, letters in red, you'll delete that before you, you send yes. the, the document sure. out. Um, sure. <clears throat> and so what we have here is... Um, you know, all of the, all of the parishes they've gone through a process to talk about you know their their own um, you know recommendations for their own parish, and then there's also a section we're talking about what do they recommend for the diocese. So the parish ideas those stay with the parish. You know th that gets recorded. That the, the some of that will be reflected in questions. Um, I think it's five through eight. Some of those ideas will be f reflected in the answers on those pages, um, but they're they're not going to be entered otherwise in the in the diocesan working document. Um, starting on page eight, we have space for pastoral areas and recommendations um, that were generated in the parishes. Um, and so you you might have one parish that says, "Well, we, we talked about." Uh, you know, ministry to um, the migrant workers and quinceañeras and, uh, and family care. And another diocese or another parish says, uh, we're working with families and um, the incarcerated and detained and uh, uh, youth and young adults. And so there may be some overlap and, they may, and there may be some things that are unique in, in one parish or another. The idea is to take all of that Take all the recommendations, uh, organize them into no more than eight, I think we said eight, yeah, eight, category, eight areas, eight pastoral areas. So, you know, the parishes have done some of that. Um, they'll have their own areas. You, you can borrow from them, but, but you, the diocese will have its own set of eight pastoral areas that are organized. Uh, and then the recommendations will be blocked into each or assigned to one of those areas. Uh, in the table, we have space for up to four recommendations in each area. Um, you can add more. You know, um, I don't know if you're familiar with using tables in Word, but you just kind of highlight one of the rows, do a right click, and say insert rows below, and then all of a sudden you've got room for, for more. Um, more recommendations. Um, uh, uh, Susan, Kate, I don't understand about the um, R1, R2, R3, R4. Um, I, I don't understand that. I'm okay. losing you on the areas on the R1, R2, R3, R4. So this is what needs to be filled in by your team. The the pulgar, all of that just leaves, stays blank. That's that's going to be an exercise that the, the delegates will do at the diocesan encuentro. So, it's just so, that before, first so before the encuentro, these areas are filled in. Yes, your team will fill the, fill them in, and you you organize it according to the information that you get back from from the 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 parishes. Hopefully, even if they didn't do a detailed working document from the parish, hopefully they will have done the the post encuentro supplement, because that's the place where all of their parish recommendations and all of their suggestions to the diocese are recorded. Um, so the, the areas, I mean, so looking over all the recommendations from the diocese for, for the diocesan level from all the parishes, right. we'll see um, something for families. So family minister, that'd be R1. No, all right, then we see something no, for minister. No, that would, be, that would be area one because you're going to have okay, a lot so, of specific recommendations regarding to uh, the pastoral care of families. So area one oh, might, I see. might be families. Oh, I see. 
So a one, our, our one, our two, our three, our four are the specific recommendations from each of the parishes. Yes. So, so there might be two, there might be 10. Right. Now, the, the more that you put, the harder it is going to be for the delegates at the diocesan encuentro to get through everything. Sure. I, I put four because, you know, I think you know, four times eight is 32. That, that's a lot. That's a lot of recommendations to work through in a short period of time. Um, you know, much so, more than that. So they, they, look over, they look over these recommendations and that they see that, okay, people are talking about ministers to the deaf. So we put their minister to the deaf uh, for area one. And be. then the specifics under that that have to do with ministry to the deaf. Correct. Uh, most likely, you know, ministry to the deaf is too too specific. Um, it could be, you know, care for for um, for di the disabled and people with special needs. Sure, uh, sure, so sure. The first recommendation could be, you know, um, developing a plan for uh, accompanying the deaf. Um, okay. You know, okay. That kind of thing. Sure, sure. You're going to get recommendations and areas that are all over the board, depending on how many parishes you have. <clears throat> sure. So it's it's going to take mm -hmm. some time to to organize it and condense it into no more than eight areas, you know, broad areas, and then I would say six, probably at the most, recommendations in one in any given area. Preferably between three and five. Um, but you uh, have you only have four here. Right. There's so there's space for four. You, you can add an extra line. Um, okay. If you don't know how to how to uh, use tables in Word, ask somebody who does, and they yeah, can. Yeah, I know how to do that. And you can add yeah. an extra line. Um, mm -hmm. So that's that's going to take a good bit of work to to do that, um, but it's really important that this be done as as concisely, but also as clearly as possible because you know, things that aren't expressed well are going to cause confusion, and there's not a lot of time at the diocesan mm -hmm. encuentro to be you know, helping people to understand what's there <laughs> and then and then make uh, an assessment of, of uh, how effective it will be. Um, so the pulgar part part is what the, so when, when the delegates arrive at the, at the Rasas Encuentro, all those areas will be filled in. And their work is to assign the number in the pulgar side, correct? correct. So how prophetic is that recommendation? How urgent is it? How much okay. does it uh, lay the foundation for a long-term goal? Um, okay. How widespread, global, how achievable, and, and how much of a ripple effect does it have in other areas? So they'll, mm -hmm. they'll score each one, they'll come up with a total. Then in the small groups, they'll, they'll add the, the scores for each of the recommendations and, e and eventually each of the areas and, and come up with their top priorities for the diocese. So each small group will do the Pulgar thing and come sure. up with their total. Right. And then um, then the, all the small groups come up with another total. So what will happen is the, the small groups will work together. They'll, they'll come up with their combined total. Um, mm -hmm. And they're going to pick one uh, recommendation that they just think is, is outstanding and they really want to highlight that. They'll share that at the, at the, the plenary session. But then the... the Every table will have, uh, so there should be at the table, this part four of the working document needs to be available for everyone. Just in case mm -hmm. they didn't bring their own uh, document, mm -hmm. this, this, however many pages, it might be four pages, um, that needs mm -hmm. to be a copy sure. for everyone, plus an extra copy for the note taker for the table to record mm -hmm. the tables. And so they'll report in the plenary their, their top recommendation, but then they also hand in to the, the diocesan team um, their whole section that shows the, the totals for all of their, uh, their analysis from their small group. Uh, afterwards, the diocesan team will, will add all of those up and come up with the top, top recommendations. And the bishop will have an opportunity to review that and make adjustments according to his his criteria, um, but th that's yeah. we'll come to that in a, in a, in a few minutes. All right. I'm still not understanding the total. 
are you going to explain that further or should I ask my question? Yeah, ask your question. Um, so at the, I'm at my table of eight mm -hmm. and R1 says whatever it says. And we discern at our table at eight that um, it is, um, I put two for, you know, I put a number for PU, right. uh, for Pulgar. Okay, the total is the total of the Pulgar, correct? Correct. Okay, so what is the value of that? Well, it's, it's because, you know, these are all um, things that, that uh, represent uh, a pastoral action that is worthwhile investing time, uh, talent, and treasure. If it's prophetic, mm -hmm. if it's urgent, if it's long-term, you know, how, how much it, uh, it fulfills those criteria is a mm -hmm. reflection of um, how much it should be a priority for the diocese. Mm -hmm. So ev every individual, every delegate will have an opportunity to score the recommendations according to their own evaluation. And, mm -hmm. then, and then the table groups will combine um, the individual reflections to come up with uh, you know, uh, a common score for the table. Okay, so table one, let's say for R1, comes up with a total of, I don't know, 30, just to say. Okay, All right, table two, score. okay, what's that? Table, okay, so table for R1, table one comes up with a score of 30. Okay. Table two comes up with a score of 10, table five, et cetera. So then for, then the total of all those tables you, you make a total of all those tables, and then from that, those grand totals is what you decide. after the encuentro. Okay, but, but, but that is what is decided as to what the diocese will indeed do, that grand total, um, correct? Yes and no. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that when we get to the, uh, the instructions for the final report. So let's okay. Just, let me just hold off on that, okay? All right, okay. All right. Um, so at the bottom of this section, it says list the top areas and recommendations and strategies for the archdiocese and the region in the next two to five years. This is going to be, you know, for each table group, they're going to come up with what, what they felt was the, the most important area, or the most important two areas, uh, and the recommendations under that, as well as the top areas for regional priorities. So once they've done this exercise for the for the diocese, then they're gonna have a conversation to say, well, which of these um, are bigger than just our diocese? Things that we could maybe work mm -hmm. in collaboratively with other, other neighboring dioceses in the region. And they're gonna come up with, mm -hmm. uh, with three things. So this, this will be filled in during the, um, uh, during the encuentro. Um, so from after the top that, the Pulgar section, they choose three things. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. And the ne so that that completes part four of the working document. Part five. But let me see. Sorry. Yeah, this is Anna Maria. I have a question. So I I understand then the work that they are doing summarizing all the totals will help them to put their priorities for our diocesan, diocesan and regional priorities. They have to do that during the plenary. Um, actually, I mean, it'll, the, the, the table groups will have some time uh, in the afternoon to reflect on the regional priorities and identify the, the top two areas for each table group. Um, and then they will go back to this part of the document. Correct. Okay. So they're, they're asked to identify the top two areas and the top three strategies under each area. Uh, in addition, um, part five gives them space where they can, I mean, this is just a brainstorming. So there might be more than, than just two areas. They might come up with up to six areas and, and different strategies under each one. So part five gives them space where they can and, and you only need one copy of this, of this section per table uh, because they'll be working on this, you know, in a brainstorming way during the, during the encuentro. Um, 
And so each table group will fill this in. They might only get up to three, three, category, three areas. They might only get one, um, but they'll, maybe they'll come up with two, you know, two or three or four strategies for that one area. But then when you combine it with the other um, tables at the diocesan level afterwards, you can fill this in even more and, and have, you know, when you report it to the, to the region and to the nation, um, you'll be able to identify, you know, multiple areas and multiple strategies within each one. The top ones will be reported in the, in the post encuentro supplement. And we'll look at that a little bit later. Okay. Um, this is just a place Thank for people you. to take their notes during the encuentro. And then finally, there's two appendices. The first one, this is mostly coming from uh, the post encuentro supplements and the, um, the evaluations that were used in the parish encuentros. If they were used, you know, if, if not, you know, if there are things that, are, that you don't have information, just leave it blank. Um, but it, there, throughout the, the five sessions and the, um, the parish encuentros, none of that information is sent back to the national level. Um, you know, even though some of the data is, is entered into the website for the, the consultation forms, um, that's not really our data to look at. That's, that's your data that belongs to the diocese. And so this first appendix is the place where you will give us at the national level uh, a summary of, a kind of a statistical summary of what happened in, you know, starting with the five sessions. And, and that will help us to, um, to report to the bishops as a whole and to the whole church what was accomplished through the course of this encuentro. So it's really important. You know, it might seem like quite a chore to, uh, to go through all the reports and, and come up with averages and, and, um, and totals and all of that kind of stuff. But it's, it's really important because we, we don't have access to any of those evaluations, any of those parish um, supplements. Uh, so this is the only place where we'll be able to assess at the national level uh, what really took place. And then finally, Appendix 2 is a statistical summary. Um, and this will be provided by us. Um, we need from each of you your, the date for your, your diocesan encuentro so that we can be sure to prepare a two-page statistical summary um, using uh, you know, widely available data, census data, general uh, social survey, a variety of, of other sources will be used to put together a basic um, kind of sociocultural profile of the, the Hispanics in your diocese. Um, okay. And so once we have so your, we will uh, have this, we will have this before the um, diocese and encuentro. Yes, that's the idea. So we we want to we want to prepare that, at preferably a month ahead. If you know, if not, maybe at least at least two weeks. It depends on how soon. You, I mean, we 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 haven't started doing it yet. <laughs> we we only have like a third or or less of the the dates for the encuentros. So we need everybody to send us their diocesan dates, and that way we can begin to to prepare those those two page reports. And we'll just send it so, to you as a word document, and you can you can cut it and paste and put it right in. So to help you to prepare that, we need to send you the information in the appendix, appendix one and appendix two. No. We need. To, no, we, we don't. We don't send. We don't send you anything, just the date of our encuentro. Yes, all, because we, we know uh, which counties belong to each diocese in the country, and, uh, okay. and we, can, we can pull that information. It's gonna take us some time, that's why we wanna, we wanna schedule it, um, so that we're you know, not spending our time now uh, working on something that isn't needed until December. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas in the meantime, people who need it tomorrow uh, still don't have it. Sure, sure. Uh, so that will come from us. So all you need is a date. That's correct. Okay. And so let's go on. Uh, let's take a look at the, the PowerPoint. So all of this, you know, the working document needs to be prepared ahead of time. Uh, the email needs to go out uh, once and you, and you send out the working document with that. Um, after that, on the day of the Encuentro, you start with, uh, the PowerPoint and the other piece that's that goes hand in hand with the PowerPoint is the 
uh, facilitator's instructions. So the day of the encuentro, we're going to present this PowerPoint? Yes, and it's because available in both languages. This is information they've, they've had before. Uh, well, let's let's go through it and, and we'll see. You'll, I think you'll see the utility of this. Ideally, okay. um, it would be great if you had two screens and two projectors and you could project one in Spanish and one in English, um, especially if you have, you know, mm -hmm. a big room where everybody is gathered. If you have separate rooms, obviously each room will, will need to have its own projector um, according to the language of the people in that room. Um, on each of the pages, and th and this is very much taken from the the planning guide, and the the facilitator's instruction. So on each slide, if you look at the notes, there's uh, instructions on what what needs to be said or done at each step of the way. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna move ahead to the outline of the day. This is slide eight. It's actually slides eight, nine, and ten. Uh, the, the planning guide shows that there's three different models that can be used for the, um, the encuentro, the diocesan encuentro, depending on whether everyone there is a delegate and has you know, voting and voice, or if you have some people who are delegates and others who are observers. Um, so the first one, which is the one that we most recommend is for everyone there has full voice and vote in the process. Um, and so the outline of the day is just the five parts you would, there's a note there at the bottom, remove that. That's just the instruction to whoever is, you know, putting the final touches on the, uh, on the PowerPoint to let them know that if, if they're using this model, they should either delete or hide slides nine and 10. Um, and so nine and 10 show the other two models. Again, remove the note at the bottom and then hide or delete the, the two slides for the model that you are not using, okay? Um, there's a reminder for the opening prayer. If you have readings, if you have um, music, those can be added. You, you know, add your own slides to to that. And of course, it would end with the uh, the prayer of the the fifth encuentro. Uh, so that's in there. Uh, then we move to taking the first step. This is a pre uh, done by a, a presenter. You can add their photo, um, give a little bit of information about the person. Um, the notes show some uh, instructions about what we hope to accomplish in that uh, length of time, no more than 30 minutes and so forth. So um, the, this PowerPoint runs throughout the day and, it, and it, you correct. present the slide according to the section of the day that's coming up. That's correct. Or is this like an overview of the day at the beginning? No, I mean, the, 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 the overview, overview is this slide. Um, as well, I guess really as well as the, you know, the goals and objectives here, it's an opportunity to gather, reflect, propose, commit, and celebrate. Then you have the outline. But then this will be ongoing throughout the day. You have, you know, the slides for the prayer, a slide with the photo of the presenter while they're presenting. If, if they have okay. information that they want to share, that can be put into the slide or the, or the slideshow, and, and you, you step through that as they go through their presentation. Um, there are two parts of the day that uh, have a lot going on in terms of uh, the table process. Uh, the first one is getting involved, <clears throat> and there's 45 minutes there. The first 20 minutes are basically giving the, the, the delegates or everyone at the table an opportunity to share what they see as um, some of the best practices, things that, that they see in their parish or movement. That are really having a positive effect in the in the Hispanic community, um, especially as they relate to some of the uh, the challenges, the obstacles, um, the needs that were articulated uh, from the the voices in the peripheries. Uh, so you want to help, or the facilitators should be helping to guide that conversation. Successful practices that respond to our, you know, the, our community that's not so in, involved, not so connected. Um, that's where we want to give the priority. And then they'll share that in the plenary session. <clears throat> but before they get to the plenary session, they're going to have 25 minutes to begin the reflection process at an individual level. 
working through that section four of the working document and assigning their own personal scores to each of the recommendations that's listed there. And so it, it's listed here in the instructions to the facilitators. Uh, it may be helpful to, um, for the facilitator to actually read each of the, the recommendations. And you only have about one minute for each recommendation. There's 25 minutes. If there's, if there's 40 recommendations, you have less than a minute. You know, so the, the, the facilitator really has to help the table keep a steady pace moving through and, and coming up with a, a score for each of those. You, you, you've lost me, Ken. So I'm on slide 16, getting involved. Yes, that's correct. They are, evalu they are evaluating what? The, so um, the ways they, in which... They need, to, they need to have section four of the working document in print, in hand. Uh, okay, let, let me, let me, let's look at that. Okay. Yeah, so that's the table of areas and, and uh, recommendations for the diocese. That's the one of part four. Yes. That w they did the Pulgar part. Correct. And, and that's what you mean that individually they are going to be um, giving a number for the Pulgar and then when they come to the reflection together in the table, they're going to discuss that. Right. So this is in the morning. They're going to do their, their they have 25 minutes to do this uh, reflection individually and come up with their own personal score. They won't even talk about it. The, the, the conversation will happen in the afternoon and they'll come back. Okay. <clears throat> and so they're going to bring it back in the afternoon, whatever they did individually for the Okay. okay. So th they are reflecting on the um, parish recommendations for things to happen at the diocesan level. Well, it's it's in the and, diocesan report, so it's it's what the diocesan yes. team has synthesized and condensed. Yes. Uh, yes. yes, these these recommendations did come from the parishes. Uh, okay. Recommendations are for the diocesan level. All right. So again, in these twenty minutes, whatever it is, they're just working silently. And giving their evaluation. Yeah, what, what I would suggest is that, uh, and I, I think it says here, um, yeah, and no, number three of the facilitated process, it says the facilitator may consider reading the recommendations aloud for the group in case some participants may have difficulty reading. And doing this may also help to keep the group moving at a steady pace to complete the analysis within the allotted time. Um, but, but, so the facilitator moves it along, and the idea is again that they, each person is just working silently, yes. doing their own evaluation of each area. Yeah. Okay. And how prophetic it is, it is, how urgent, how long term, how global, how, how achievable, and, and yes. how much of a ripple effect. Uh, number six, no, uh, number seven is very important. It says encourage the participants not to use the five rating, not to give a five to everything. They need to think critically about each recommendation and rate it carefully and honestly for each of the six criteria. So okay. there's not a lot of time, you know, it's a, it's a little bit of a, it may be a little bit of a challenging process for some, but it, it needs to be moved through very quickly in order to, to cover all of the, the items. And it says if, um, if they don't finish during, you know, there's, a, there's a break that follows the, uh, um, if, it's, if, if, if it's before the plenary or after the, the plenary even moving into the meal, but they can use break time to finish it before the afternoon session uh, so that when they come to, to the, um, the next step, they'll have all of their answers uh, scored at that point. <clears throat> okay. This is, a brand, this is a brand new twist, huh? Yes, and so this was this was not something that was detailed in the original planning guide that went out. No, uh, not so, at all. No, not so this is new, and it's it's something that the the team here came up with as um, a way of of moving the conversation forward, so that it really 
it, it takes into account a lot of different aspects of a, any given recommendation. Um, and yet, I mean, once they once they get through maybe the first couple of areas, I think they'll they'll be you know they'll have a good sense of how it works and they'll be able to move through it more quickly. Um, because if if we have forty recommendations and and it's just a, a free for all conversation, you know, we felt like it's not going to get anywhere. It, it's too hard right. to with that amount right. of information to try to to come to a consensus in a very short period of time. So that's why we created this tool. And uh, and we hope that it will be very effective in uh, in mm -hmm. directing that conversation and achieving the result in a in a short period of time. Now I have a question. I don't know if this is the place to bring it up. Um, should I throw it out? Sure. Um, the the challenge that I have in my diocese is that um, the recommendations from the parishes are very superficial. Okay. I think so, that's, that's going to be a common okay. theme. Uh, I think a lot of dioceses are going to encounter, and, and probably if there are a lot of parishes, there will be some parishes that just do an outstanding job. Uh, and then there will be other parishes where it's, it's very, very simple ideas. Uh, so, how do we, so how do we motivate, I mean, to, to, um, to not finish this process with same old, same old, you know? How do we... Um, I, the sense I have is that what I'm feeling is that the diocesan event is the last opportunity that we have, at least here in the diocese, to really um, think creatively and Correct. to really move things forward and not end up with same old, same old. Right. So my challenge is how do we how do we get how do we do that so that yeah. the diocesan encuentro becomes a really fruitful experience. Well, that's where there's a, there's a lot of leeway with the the team that's putting together the diocesan working document. Uh, you know, hopefully you'll have some people from the parishes who are participating in that team, and 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 people who are articulate. You know, people who who can think a little bit more deeply. And so even if it's not just a matter of cut and paste uh, from the parish working documents, you know, this this is an opportunity to. Um, you know, really, really put puts forward something meaningful. And yes, it, it's inspired by, and in some cases it may be directly from the parish, but it needs to reflect um, ideas that respond to, to significant pastoral challenges in the diocese. And that's up to the team to, to articulate that in the best way possible. You also have to keep in mind that you know the delegates are you know they're they're critical of uh, their their ability for critical thinking and their ability ability for reading complex ideas is going to be all over the place you're going to have people with a very basic um education level and then you're going to have uh you know professionals uh and so you have to find a balance in the way it's articulated so that it 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 can be uh, grasped at a simple level but also that um there's room for, for depth and, uh, um, you know, looking uh, systematically and comprehensively at, at the needs in each pastoral area. Uh, so, so, what I'm not, so, my, so my question is, at what point and how do we bring in the new idea that was not, uh, perhaps a new idea that was not expressed in the, any of the parish documents? How do we, we were thinking to try to formulate questions that will really motivate the delegates to think deeper, to go deeper in their thinking. But what I'm seeing here from this document is just um, yeah, um, working with the information we get from the parishes. Yeah. Well, my, our, our thinking is that, you know, much of the, of the deep thinking needs to be prepared in advance of the Encuentro Day. Um, I mean, th there is going to be an opportunity in the evaluation for individuals to say, you know what, I have an idea that wasn't reflected in the, in the, uh, the recommendations that were put forward. And there's like five lines where they can, they can write that idea. And that can be brought in after the fact into the diocese report. Um, but your team needs to do that, that deep critical thinking ahead of time so that the 
the analysis, it's really, we're, we're, we're banking on the, the brain power of the delegates there to analyze critically uh, the recommendations that have been put forward. The, the deep uh, reflection on the needs and how, how they can be addressed in the diocese, that needs to happen ahead of time. If it's not reflected in the, in the parish working documents and the recommendations that are coming from there, that's really the, the, the diocesan team's job to take that as an inspiration to, to feed it with their own experience of the, the parish encuentros and their own understanding of the needs of the, of the diocese and come up with a set of uh, pastoral areas and, and, and recommendations um, that are really meaningful uh, and go to the heart of the matter. So the diocesan team can tweak things. Yes, absolutely. It's, it's, okay. not, it's not just a matter of summarizing and, and you know, okay. copying. Uh, okay. It 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 has to be uh, a profound and yet you know easily grasped um, document that that the delegates can work with. Okay. It's good. Okay. So thank you. Um, so then the plenary, um, you know, each each small group is invited to share one successful practice. So that comes from the first part of that session before they got into the pulgar. Um, and then, then they, have, they have a meal. Uh, there's another presentation accompanying everyone, uh, a break. And it's at that point later in the afternoon when they, they come back and they start working with the, the scores that were assigned. Uh, and so again, there's two parts. This is a, a 60 minute session on bearing fruit. The first 30 minutes, they're going to be adding up the scores, their individual scores, uh, and then looking within each of the areas to see, you know, what are the totals, what are the top priorities, um, and if, if they're okay with the way it turned out. Uh, but in any case, they're going to have an opportunity as a table group to, uh, um, to then say, well, what, you know, what they did in the morning was just the recommendations. Once they see the scores for the recommendations, then they're gonna come back and they're also gonna score the areas as a whole. So, you know, in the table, there's a line for the area and then there's four or however many lines for the recommendations under that. In the morning, they're just scoring the recommendations, not the areas. Once they do that, once they total all of the scores, then they're gonna go back and, and as a table group, they're gonna say, well, which is the most important area to address using the same criteria, uh, Bulgar criteria. And that will be reported um, in the the plenary. Um, after the break. <clears throat> so once that is all scored, then they go to the second part, which is identifying the <clears throat> the top priorities for the diocese and also the top priorities for the region. And so remember at on uh, in the working document, there was the pulgar table. And then after the table, there was space for, for two areas and three recommendations for the diocese and two areas and three um, strategies for the regions. And so this is, this is where they, they work together and converse for 30 minutes to fill in that small table uh, for, for, uh, for, for their table group. <clears throat> Does that make sense? Mm. Um, Ken, um, yes. how good are you with my location? <laughs> I'm still working <laughs> on that one. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it's the uh, the role of the facil table group facilitators is really important. You know, you'll we have we have put together the instruction sheet for them. It's in a word document. If you if you want to adjust the the process for your diocese. You know, you can make changes. You can you can add additional instructions uh, in that document. But however it it ends up, um, if either you know call a meeting of the the small group facilitators or at least send it to them by email and and give them a chance to to look over that ahead of time. Maybe have a a, a phone conference call or a webinar uh, to cover the steps so that they're sure that everybody, you know, that one person at each table understands what their their role is going to be and how they're going to uh, help the process along this conversation that we're having now is being recorded 
Um, it will be put up on the website. Either this one, uh, we have another English one tomorrow, whichever one, um, you know, one of the two will, will end up on the website and one of the two Spanish will also end up on the website. So you can invite people to, you know, to go through this and, and they'll hear all of your questions and, and uh, um, you know, if, if they have further questions, then they, they would go to you to, to respond. Uh, and of course, you can always come to us if you have questions. <clears throat> Okay. Yes. We didn't when, will, when, when will it be on the website, Ken? Do you have any idea? Uh, next week. Because okay, I meet with my Edavi group next Saturday. Okay. Um, but we have we have two sessions tomorrow, and then um, you know hopefully um, by Monday, Patty and I can can do the final editing and and get it up. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so then there's a break, um, the, the second plenary session. Um, each small group will share one diocesan recommendation and one regional strategy, including the pastoral area that is focused on. So, but everything else will be recorded on those sheets and those will be turned in and that will be used to, to finalize the working document after the Encuentro. Uh, the other piece that's important here is the, uh, the selection of delegates. Uh, both for the regional encuentro and the national encuentro. So there will not be a process at the regional encuentros for the selection of, of national delegates. There are no regional delegates to the national event. They're all diocesan delegates to the regional encuentro and to the national encuentro. Um, so just like at the parish level, we put together ballots where people can indicate their, their openness to be considered. Um, there's a slide here that shows all of the criteria that are involved. Um, we also have a slide here for the region. What you will need to do is, is choose, you know, whatever your region is. Um, you can choose the states that are, are part of your region and then color them in. So like I just selected uh, six and, uh, and, and you use that map to say, you know, maybe people don't know what are the other dioceses that are around them. Um, you know what, West Virginia is not part of that. It's Ohio and Michigan. Anyway, um, so that's the idea. You color in the, the, the states that belong to your region and it gives people an idea of who their, their diocesan neighbors are in their region. And then there's a last page that needs to be filled in with the, uh, the location and date of your regional encuentro and, and what are the estimated costs that you have come up with for the regional and the national level. All of that needs to be filled in. You know, we suggest breaking it down between the, the diocesan contribution, parish contribution, and then the delegate contribution. You know, if, if you want the diocese and the parish to cover it and you have the funds to do that, then you just take out that last line. Um, but uh, it, it, it gives people uh, an understanding of what they're committing themselves to if they, say, if they say, yes, I can do it, and they fill out the ballot, and then, and then you come to them afterwards and say, oh, by the way, it's $500. Well, that's not really fair. So we put a slide in there, and you need to, to put in your own um, calculations on what, what needs to go on each, on each line. Uh, then the evaluation, and, and there's a, a, a document for that. Uh, and then whatever slides you want to add for the mass uh, would go at the end. <clears throat> um, let's take a quick look at the evaluation. Okay, so those are the ballots. Uh, let me see here. Here's the evaluation. The, the parish evaluation, we did it in, in two pages. This one we condensed into one uh, because a lot of the, the ideas are being recorded in the working document itself. And so it's not necessary to put them here for each individual. Um, they can respond to the logistics and hospitality, the process, and there's a space for comments about that. And then finally, the um, like I, I mentioned earlier, if there was anything that was missing out of the recommendations that they think, you know what, you guys totally missed. Uh, you know, there's, we have a bunch of homeless people in our area. 
uh, Latinos and and um, they need to, <laughs> we need to have something that responds to that. So then they, they write it up. And that can be uh, reported after the fact in the, the final diocesan working document. <clears throat> what is DWD? Diocesan oh, working, document. working document. Okay, yeah. all right. <laughs> yep. Okay, and then so once the, the encuentro is done, then we move to the instructions for preparing the final report. And so you need to collect the registration record, records from the diocesan encuentro, table notes from each of the small groups from the getting involved moment, table notes from the being fruitful moment, delegate ballots, and the evaluation. So all of those will be utilized in preparing the final report. Um, there's three main tasks. The first is to review and update the diocesan working document. Um, so if there are any adjustments, you know, you, like the, uh, when people had an opportunity to express their, their, their best practices from the parishes in the plenary and what was recorded by hand from the table groups, if there are things that, that are there that were not reflected in the working document, you can add them in. Um, and then you should also, uh, you know, the, the, table, the table groups are probably not gonna come up with a score for each of the individual criteria. It's just gonna be a total score for each of the recommendations. Um, and so that's what you would enter into the, the document. Um, <clears throat> Now, th this is very important. It says the bishop should be consulted to approve the final ordering of the recommendations. Um, if, there are, if there are recommendations with a high overall score, but the team does not feel that they are realistically achievable, at least at this time, then they should discuss whether those recommendations should be ranked lower overall, considering that it may not be possible to put them into practice. And that's, you know, the, the, um, the team, the diocesan team should do that analysis and make a recommendation to the bishop, but it's really the bishop who makes the, the final decision to say in each pastoral area, these are our top priorities for the diocese. And that's what will go into the final report, regardless of the scores. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then review the additional recommendations uh, from the last question on the evaluations um, and consider adding them in an appropriate pastoral area. That's to entirely up to the judgment of the diocesan team. Um, you know, maybe somebody came up with a, a, an idea that they're passionate about, but it's really, you know, completely disconnected from anything else that is, is being done or is even possible in the diocese. And you, you just have to say, you know what, we can't do it. We can't. We can't put it in. Um, but on the other hand, there may be something that that you say, "Wow, we should have thought of that," and then you can put that in. And you don't have a score for it, but you can still, as a team, and with in consultation with the bishop, say, "You know what? This should have been our number one priority," and it goes up to the top. Um, or you find, you know, you find a place for it somewhere in the middle. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, then you fill out the post encuentro supplement document, and let's take a look at that. But before I'm not, that, I'm not, being, I'm not. I'm having trouble opening it. I don't know if it's my computer or. Okay. Um, does uh, everybody have it opened? Um, well, let me he's screen test it. Yeah, like, I'm, you don't I'm need sharing to the screen, screen so. Um, before we take a look at that, let's let's go quickly through the the delegate process. So everyone should know by this time how many delegates there they can bring to the the regional encuentro, and how many they can bring to the the national encuentro. Um, so once again, they'll they'll take the ballots, look through them, and uh, hopefully people will know so most of these people that are that are putting themselves forward, um, and the idea is, you know, recommended 30% youth and young adults, 30% new or emerging leaders, 40% seasoned leaders, a mix of men and women, U.S. born and immigrant. Um, and so you do your best. You have the slots that you that you have, uh, and you fill them to your best ability with the, the ones that, that put themselves forward. Um, before you finalize that, you make sure you contact them 
and get at least a, a verbal or email commitment that yes, they can follow through um, either just as a regional rep or delegate or both regional and, and national. Um, all right, so let's take a look at the, um, uh, po diocesan post encuentro supplement. Mm -hmm. I'm not, o I'm not able to open it. Yeah, you may, you may try downloading it again. Um, if, if you continue to have problems, let me know and we'll, I'll talk to, uh, to Patty and see if we need to upload it again. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I'm not even getting anything that I can download. Okay. It just, you know, connecting and the circle keeps going and going and nothing comes up. The screen is blank. Okay. Maybe try going to the opposite language. Like if you're looking at the English page, go to the Spanish page and see it. I did. I did both. Okay. And I'm not able to do that at all. I did both. All right. The same thing. Well, we'll take a look at that. But in the meantime, let me just walk through um, sure. this information. So there's a little bit of information from the registration data, how many participants, how many males and females. It's asking for a percent over age 30, percent 18 to 29, and percent under 18. Those don't have to be exact figures. You know, if you didn't um, include that on the registration form, um, just give a rough estimate. Looking out at over the the group, what was your sense? You know, how many of of the participants were young adults between 18 and 20, and 29? How many over, or what percentage? And you, you know, even if if you go like by ten percent, you know, uh, sixty, thirty, and ten, or you know, if 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 there were very few or almost no nobody under the age of eighteen, you know, you might say one or two percent or zero percent, um, but otherwise just in, uh, in groups of ten or ten or five or ten percent uh, chunks it's good enough to make an estimate. Uh, mention the names of any ecclesial movements that you knew, you know are present, uh, and then a rough estimate of what percentage of the participants were coming from the ecclesial movements. Um, then there's information from the evaluation. So it, it's, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, you need to uh, have this done by somebody who's, who's good with working with numbers, um, but they're coming up with uh, averages, average scores from the evaluations. Uh, summary of the comments, uh, logistics and hospitality, and then, I mean, the the working document will have more detail um, on the all of the recommendations and pastoral areas for the diocese. But all we're asking for here is the top three to five areas that stood out as things that really need to be made a priority for the diocese in in Hispanic ministry, and then. Um, Three, three areas and two strategies under each uh, that you want to pass on to the to the regional um, working document to say these are things that we think are really important to to move forward. There's space in the in the working document itself to put more detail, more than three areas, more than more than two strategies. But these are the top ones. These are the ones that you really want to say we think the region needs to focus on this. And then the last several pages of this is all about, um, you know, contact information. We, we want to have um, contact information for the parish coordinators um, so that we, especially the email, so that we can invite them to, to take surveys and give additional feedback after the fact. Um, that's all part of the consultation. So, and we have no other way of, of getting, I mean, that information belongs to you. And, and you've maintained that relationship. Uh, up till now, we have had no contact um, with the parish uh, teams or, or especially the parish coordinators. Um, so this is, this is our way, or the, the vehicle for us to be able to maintain that conversation going forward. Um, and you can add additional sheets if needed. Uh, basically, it's just a matter of adding, adding extra lines in the table or, or you, can, you can copy the page and add an extra page if it's, if it's a lot. And the next part is uh, diocesan delegates to the regional encuentro, There's there, as well as space for four alternate delegates. 
And then finally, um, two pages of delegates to the National Encuentro. And again, you can add as many lines or pages as you need according to uh, however many delegates were assigned to you. Okay, any right. questions? Yeah, on the, um, on the website, the middle column next to uh, where you have the PowerPoint, you have Keynote, what's that all about? Okay, that's for people who use the Macintosh and who do not have uh, Microsoft Office. Uh, them, a lot of them use Apple Keynote, which is another, it's like PowerPoint, uh, oh. it's, it's a different program. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. So if you're uh, using Microsoft Office, you don't need to worry about that. Okay. And it hasn't been created yet. Uh, Patty's going to work on that when she has some some time coming up in the next week or so. Um, and so it'll be available for people who, okay. who, who don't use the Microsoft PowerPoint format. Any other questions? Can I take another webinar? <laughs> <laughs> you, I do you it can, in Spanish at two yeah, o'clock. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're doing it again this afternoon in Spanish, and then tomorrow morning in Spanish. Oh, well, depending on what, what your time zone is, it may be morning or afternoon, and then another well, one. It's wonderful. Well, it's I wonderful that, that it's, I came, yeah, and I it's came wonderful like, that it's recorded and it's going to be yes, on the website because yes, this is just okay. way too much information to it's really be able to um, to present this well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that, that was a good I'm, idea. I'm going to have somebody from my diocese do uh, listen in at two o'clock, so the two of us will have heard it. Okay. So we can confer. Perfect. Well, thank you very much, Ken. Thanks, thanks for all the work. work. Thanks for all the work you're giving us. <laughs> yes, well, it's my pleasure. I'm, and thank you your for coming. Your pleasure. <laughs> no, I, I think your questions were fantastic, and they will go a long way to helping other people when they when they hear the recording. Um, and you know, it's complicated. <laughs> it's not an easy it process. Um, yeah. We're but we're hoping that what the adjustments that we made will will lead to a very meaningful, um, you know, uh, report. the the final The final diocesan documents will uh, be of great value both to your own diocese and then also to the region and and the whole nation. Yeah, I think so. it will be. So thank I you for so. taking the time. God bless you all. And uh, thank you. You know, let me know if I can help with anything else. Thank you so much. Thank God you bless you. Thank bye you, bye everyone. Bye. bye. bye.